Hello, and welcome to Paint Along Studios TV. Today we'll be painting Wine Nook. We're going to need some supplies. Today we'll be using some paper towels, some water for cleaning our brushes, some styrofoam plates for holding paints, and some liquid acrylics. We shall need white, deep yellow, burnt sienna, Mars black, phthalo green, bright red. We're also going to need some brushes, a number 10 filbert brush, a number six round brush, and a number zero script brush. Let's start with the number 10 filbert brush. We're going to go ahead and get two scoops of burnt sienna, a small scoop of Mars black, and we're going to mix those together. This will be our table color. We're going to use our brush to measure with. We want about four inches from the bottom of the canvas. Make a line across. Then we're going to use our brush to determine how thick the table is going to be. It's going to be the bristles plus the metal part of the brush, about four inches or so, and go ahead and fill it in with that nice brown color that we made. It's kind of a chocolate brown. We'll be adding some more details after it has a little chance to dry, but go ahead and fill it all the way in. We're going to move right into the next color. We won't need to clean our brush. We're going to mix it right on top of the table color. Okay, we're going to need two scoops of deep yellow, two scoops of white, okay, I'm going to save that color. I'm going to get a small scoop of black and a small scoop of burnt sienna, put it off to the side. I want to clean my brush out and start with the lighter color, that yellowish sort of color. This is going to be our spotlight. We want to create a big old oval in the center above the table, and then we want to proceed to make X's. I'm making very quick X marks, and they're overlapping on top of each other. I want to be a little bit brighter in the middle, so I add a little extra white to my color, and just kind of work it out. Again, X, 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 X. Okay, then I'm going to mix the two colors together, that yellowish color with the slightly more brown one, and again, I'm going to do X, 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 letting this spotlight get a little bit bigger, but also a little bit darker as it fans out. Okay, you want to get bigger and bigger, messy little X's. We're not blending it completely. We're also going to get some black and do the same thing. The paint is still very wet, so it's mixing a little bit with it. We don't need a whole lot, just a little bit at a time, so it still mixes. We'll fill up our brush just a little bit more when we actually come to the edges. But right now, when we're just going around this area, make sure you wipe your brush every once in a while if you get a very, very dark spot. And then sort of blend it out. We want it to get progressively darker, not instantly. Okay, then we'll grab a whole bunch of black and go around the edges with it. We want to fill in the canvas. Still doing kind of the X marks as it gets close to our little spotlight. We're going to carefully go right above the table with this color. I'm going a little bit slower, pushing down a little bit less hard with my brush so I can get in there, not overlapping the table too much. It will overlap a little bit. When you bump two colors up against each other, they naturally overlap slightly. Okay, I'm going to get some of the lighter color just so I don't lose so much of it. I'm trying to get it to mix a little bit so that it slowly fades to black rather than abruptly. So I'm trying to work it into that black color that I have. So I'm kind of playing around with it. Okay, then I want to get the black underneath the table. So I'm going to fill up with just the black. You can have a little bit of the other colors in there if you want, but I mostly just grab black and, you know, whatever's left will get mixed in. And fill up underneath the table. Okay, we want to clean our brush. Also make sure your canvas is starting to dry a little bit. We want to switch to the number six round brush. We want to get two scoops of white. Again, our canvas is dry. Use a hair blow dryer if it's not drying. A scoop of deep yellow and a small scoop of burnt sienna and a tiny dab of Mars black. Mix them together. Okay, we have our nice light color there. We also want to have a separate pile, a scoop of deep yellow, a scoop of burnt sienna, and a little dab of Mars Black, so there's less white in this mixture. Okay, we're going to make our tablecloth. Start with the lightest color. 
We want to come past the halfway point in the painting. So if my painting were cut in half the long ways, come past that halfway point. Okay, give a little bit of space, make a line coming all the way down, and then connect it. Okay, so we want to have a little bit of a wobbly line, and then we want to come diagonally down and meet that straight down line. We're going to leave a little extra space along the right side. Still want to have that nice diagonal downwards curve, and then a little bit of wiggling as you get closer to the top. You want to fill it in with the lightest color that we made, all the way in. Again, we made sure our canvas was dry. We always want to work on the dry areas of our canvas. We just did that black underneath, so I used a hair blow dryer to dry that so I can put this nice color right on top and it's not going to mix with that dark, dark black. But I want to go ahead and fill in the entire little tablecloth and you can kind of shape it a little bit here and there, but the main thing is you want to have that little bit of a drop coming down off the table. Okay, I'm going to dry it. I might add some of that shadow color at the top. That's where my objects are going to be placed. They're going to be placed kind of at the top of the tablecloth. So I'm going to smear some of this darker color that I mixed kind of along the top. Then I'm going to grab some of the lighter color again and I want to spread it out. I want it to mix with this color slightly at the edges so I still keep the bottom half that lighter shade but right where the darker color touches the lighter shade I'm going to go ahead and use that lighter color. I'm also doing little touch-ups down here in case I need a second coat on any of those little tablecloth areas. Then I go back and forth between the colors till they get nice and blended at the edges. So a little here, a little there. Okay, clean your brush. This one we stir it around, wipe the water out, let it touch the bottom of the glass usually. We're going to mix our next color. I need a clean plate, so I'm going to go ahead and grab one. Put it right on top there. Okay, I'm going to get two scoops of burnt sienna. One small scoop of Mars Black. I'm going to start adding some details to my table, so I need a few different shades of brown. So this is my medium brown. I want a scoop of burnt sienna, a dab of Mars Black, and a dab of white. I want this to be a little bit lighter, so I might even add a second dab of white to it. Okay, two scoops of Mars Black, one scoop of burnt sienna, Try to get an even mixture. You want it to look like a black, but still a little bit on the brown side. We're going to start with the medium brown, though. First, we're going to add the details to our table. We want to divide the table right where the napkin or the tablecloth starts bending down. That's where the edge of the table is. So that's the little ridge to make it look a little 3D. I'm going to grab a little bit of the darker color, put it right along the edge just to separate the top of the table from the part that's curving down. I also want to make it a very shiny table, so I'm going to add some lighter colors as well to the bottom. So a little, a few little lines on either side of the tablecloth. Then I'm going to blend them out using the medium color. So I'm grabbing some of the medium color, kind of spreading them a little bit. You decide kind of how far they're going to go. I'm going to stick that brush in the water. I want to switch to my little detail brush. I'm going to do some smaller details. I want to do some wood lines in the top of the table. So a few little dark lines using the dark color. Then I'm going to add some light shine lines. And then I want to even out both of them with the medium color. So I'm letting this color touch both the dark areas and the light areas, kind of evening it out, softening it almost. A little bit here, a little bit there. I'm going to dry it just a sec because I'm going to be adding some ridges along the side of the table. I want to add about two lines so it makes three little ridges. I'm using the darkest color. I can also add a little bit of this to the top little edge if I want. I'm going to spread it out just a little bit. I want it to kind of even out. I don't want it to be a super strong line, so I might even add some of the medium color to kind of like soften it just a little bit. I'm always playing back and forth. That's why I like having all three of those colors mixed. I can go back and forth. Okay, then a little extra shine here, a little bit of the lighter color little smaller lines using this smaller brush here and there. Let's go ahead and get a shadow underneath our tablecloth. So again, we're using the dark color just along the bottom edges. So nothing that curves up, only the parts that are kind of curving downwards. Okay, so I'm coming along this 
right side of the tablecloth quite a bit most of the way down on the right side of the tablecloth just a little bit along the left but right where it dips down I definitely want to get around the tablecloth there okay I want to stir that brush okay I'm switching back to the red handle brush I dried it off I'm gonna go ahead and use it I'm using white and I'm gonna start the basket I want to do a slightly curved line and then two slanting lines, one longer along the right side and a little bit shorter along the left. And then I want to connect it with a line that kind of swoops downwards. Okay, it has a little bit of a curve there. I'm going to thicken the top and the bottom lines with my white. This is going to be a very bright little basket. Okay, but I'm going to switch brushes for now and I want to add some grapes inside of it. I want to get two scoops of white and make my nice grapey colors. A scoop of bright red and you know maybe a little extra red a small scoop of phthalo green I want it to turn purple the phthalo green has a large amount of blue in it but you'll have to play with it so you get just the right color make sure it is a medium color and then we want to get a dark color we want to get a scoop of bright red a small scoop of phthalo blue again more red than blue so it still turns purple this one's going to be much darker you know, twist my brush get some of it off I want to get a scoop of bright red two scoops of phthalo green this time I want it to be very very dark it's almost gonna look black maybe just a hint of purple in there or even a little hint of green start with the medium color though fill up the gold basket or it will be gold with some circles you can make some big ones some small ones you can have some that are tucking underneath see how I added a few half circles I made a whole circle and then a few behind it you can do this to the side and the top of the canvas as well. Get a little half one right there, one along the side. I'm going to get the lightest color now, that sort of medium color. I want to make it a little bit darker. Okay, so I mix the medium and the light together, and I'm going to get the right side of most of the grapes. Okay, a little bit thicker than a line. I'm trying to fill in just a little bit. Then I want to get dark on the other side, so I get the darkest color. Fill in a little bit there. And then I want to get the medium color and fill in the rest of the grape. So it starts looking a little bit 3D. You can not spend more time on your grapes, but these are the ones a little bit in the background. We're going to have things overlapping and coming in front of them. So I'm not going to spend too much time on these ones. But I'm going to fill in. I'm going to try to squeeze in a few extra grapes. I'm just using the dark color, though. And then I'm going to have them start coming out the top. So again, I switch back to the medium color. I want to create a little bit of a curve here. Okay, so all the grapes together, so they're not all bumping evenly. It's not like a mountain of grapes. Got a few bumps here, a few bumps there. Kind of dips down in the center. And I want to fill it in with a bunch of circles. Okay, same thing. I want to get the dark side along kind of the bottom, a little bit to the left on each of the grapes. And then I'm going to put the opposite. I'm going to put a lighter color along the right side towards the top of each of the grapes. And again, these grapes are kind of in the background, so I'm mixing the light and the medium color together. I'm not using the brightest purple. I'm going to use that really bright one for the grapes that are in front. These ones are pushed a little bit into the background. Okay, and then I'm going to fill it in with the medium color, just to try to get a little bit of those colors to blend slightly. It's all very wet, so it'll blend as it touch it. I'm going to add a little shine. I am using the lightest color now, but I'm just adding a little curved line on each of them along that right side. Okay, then I want to get a little bit lighter color. So I'm using the color that is mixed between the lightest and the medium color, and I'm going to make some grapes that are in front, and I'm going to have them cascade down our little basket. Okay, see how it's coming in front of that white line? Again, it's a lighter color, so they'll stick out. They'll be in front. I want to have a whole bunch really close together at the top, and then I want to keep them really close together, but I want to have less of them. See that? I got about two next to each other, three next to each other. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing, put three or four really close together, then one dangling below it. Okay, they can be small, they can be medium. I try to keep them all about the same size, but slight variation within it. I want to get an even lighter color, so I added some more white to this. 
I'm going to go ahead and add a nice little shine to each of them. Okay, I want to get them nice and shiny. I'm going to get the medium color for the shadow. I don't want to use the darkest color this time. Get the medium color for the shadow side. A little curve in there. It's going to mix a little bit with this. These ones are already filled in. Okay, I want to add even shiny little dots to each of them. I like them oval, so I kind of do a tiny little smear. You can either use white or just a lighter version of this color. Shiny, shiny grapes. I'm mostly adding to the front grapes, but I am adding a little bit of a shine to the back grapes. Then I want to clean my brush, and I want to add some decorative swirls. My grapes are dry now. I'm using the white again with my smaller brush. My number zero script brush. I want to add some swirls. I like to add some at the top and they kind of swirl inwards. And then some at the bottom. You can choose the direction of the swirl, but you want to thicken the line a little bit. We're going to go back and make the basket a nice gold color. So you don't want to make them too thin or else it's going to be really hard to stay within the lines. So the swirling on top of these grapes. See, we're not even going to see those ones in the very bottom of the basket. They're going to be covered up, but we want to have the impression of them there. Okay, then we want to switch colors. I'm going to get a clean plate. I'm also using a clean brush. I'm going to get a scoop of white, a scoop of deep yellow, and a dab of burnt sienna and a dab of Mars black. Mix them together. Maybe a little scoop of deep yellow, scoop of burnt sienna, make a darker version of this color, a dab of Mars black. I'm going to go ahead and add, make the basket gold. So I'm using the lightest color first to fill it in. The basket can be a little bit wet, but I prefer it to be dry so you can dry it off if you need to. I'm getting the lightest color and I'm filling in everything. That's why I want it to be nice and easy when I start adding the darker color to blend into this wet color. I want to do wet on wet. So now I'm introducing a little bit of the dark color. I'm putting it mostly at the bottom, so a little line at the bottom of the basket. And then I'm just adding it to some of the swirls and letting it mix as it wants to. Adding a little bit to the top part of the basket. See how it's getting nice and golden? It's mixing with the color. We're still leaving some of the light color, but we're adding more of this darker sort of gold color that we made. Okay, I'm letting it mix. You can go back and forth between the colors. If you feel like it needs more light color, add more light if it needs more dark. I like the darker hue, so I'm adding quite a bit of the darker color. I like to come down each little swirl, so there's at least a little bit on each little swirl of the darker color. Okay, and again, an even darker version of the color if you want, just at the very bottom, and then in a few places where you think it would look good in the basket. Okay, let's mix another color. We switched to the red handle brush. We cleaned it and dried it. We want two scoops of phthalo green, a scoop of Mars black, mix them together. Okay, and then a scoop of Mars black, save that off to the side, a scoop of white and a scoop of phthalo green. This is gonna be for our bottle. So we have our dark, medium, and light. Start with the medium, okay? It's gonna be about the same length as our brush, maybe a tiny bit taller. Okay, we want it to be nice and curved at the top. We're not making the neck yet. And then just a little bit curved at the bottom. It's a little more flat of a line. Then connect them. Connect those two shapes. So it's kind of a rounded cylinder shape. Even at the edges and then start filling it in. It's always easy to see if the shape needs to be adjusted after you fill it in because you're less focused on the lines and how they look and more focused on the actual shape. Then add a little bit of a neck to the bottle. So it's just a smaller rectangle towards the top. I make it about two inches or so. I like to connect it to the bottle though. So I do a bad job of tracing. I trace the edge and then end up along the curved side. It fills in the gap just a little bit. We also wanna add that little lid. So it's just a little bit of the bottle kind of sticking out at the top. So a little bit on each side, the left and the right side, it gets a little wider in the neck of the bottle. See that little tiny lid area? That's where the cork's gonna stick out. Okay, I'm evening out some of this, some of these edges here. I wanna get the darker color now. 
bottles always look very luminous and the way you get that is by putting this darker color or even just a straight black along the edges of the bottle. So I'm not making the bottle bigger, I'm putting it on the wet paint so it mixes. You can help it along with a paper towel. If it just looks like a line, go ahead and wipe it a few extra times with a kind of dry brush, less paint in it. But to apply it, you want to have the darker color. Then we want to fill up the wine glass. I like it pretty full, not all the way to the neck, but you know, close to there. And then I'm going to start filling it in with just straight black, or I can use the darker version of the color. It depends on how wet your paint is and how much of the green you want kind of showing through. So I'm going to fill it up with some black or just the darkest version of the green. Depends on how wet the paint is. Okay, a little bit of a straight line there. Okay, evening out the bottom. Can add a little shadow under there if you want. I'm rubbing it with my finger so it looks soft. I'm gonna add some highlights now. So I wanna get the lightest color. I have a few lines along the little area where the cork's gonna come out and then a line coming down the bottle. I'm letting it mix with the wet color, then I'm going to switch brushes. I want to get the smallest brush, or I can stick to the red one. You just have to make sure it's coming to a very fine point. And I'm adding a little extra highlight. You either want to dry it, or you just want to very carefully have a lot of paint and go over it again. So there's an extra highlight there, a few extra lines at the top, or just a little bit brighter. Okay, then we want to make the cork color. So I cleaned my brush. I got a scoop of white, a scoop of yellow, a little dab of burnt sienna. That'll be the lightest highlight color of it. Then I want to get a scoop of yellow, a scoop of burnt sienna, a little dab of Mars black, and I have a darker version of this color. Okay, I'm going to start with the dark color, the medium one. My little cork has to be a little bit smaller than my bottle opening and has to curve just a little bit at the top. I'm going to fill in the whole thing. Okay, then I'm going to switch to the small brush, switch to the small brush get the lightest color and we're going to come around the edges of it so it's not going to get bigger we're working right on top of the wet paint come along the edges okay along the top edge along the left and right side then I'm going to add little tiny pokes I'm going to poke 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 along the right side of it with this lighter color so it starts getting that nice quirky texture then I'll get some of the medium color I might even make a darker version of this color and I'm going to add a few pokes on top of that, I like to make it a little darker, so just add more brown, a tiny bit more black. Okay, so I made a darker version, just a little tiny bit. I'm going to add some pokes along the left side as well. Okay, these are going to be the darker little pokes, and it's going to kind of mix with the color. You can go back and forth between these colors if you need more, if you need less. Get two scoops of deep yellow. We're going to switch colors now. Two scoops of phthalo green. We want to add some vines now. Two scoops of Mars Black. Okay, a really, really dark green. It's going to look super, super dark. This will be our shadow color. Now we want to add a scoop of Deep Yellow and a scoop of Thalo Green. To whatever's left in our brush, maybe we add a little dab of the Mars Black, a little dab of the White. We want a medium color now. We'll also be getting a highlight color. I like a little extra yellow. That's just my preference for greens. But I want to get a scoop of deep yellow and a scoop of white mixed with whatever's left in my brush. That'll be my highlight color. Start with the medium color first, though. So I got my medium color. I'm going to create a vine kind of drifting. I'm resting my pinky or my wrist on the canvas. See, I can push down hard for a fat line, very thin by barely touching the canvas. I'm going to flick some lines away from the main vine. Okay, and then I'm going to add some little swirlies. I'm going to start adding some leaves, just some little curved lines that come together at a point, little teardrop shape almost. They curve right where they connect, and then they come to a point on the end. You can also have some extra cute little leaves by having three leaves all stuck together. So they come together where they connect to the vine, and then they kind of poke apart on the ends. You can have a little bit of both if you want them all to match, make them all the same, that's fine. I like to have a little bit of each, it's just decorative. I'm gonna fill it in, again, we're using the medium color. Add some leaves, add some little vines. I like to put some at the bottom. At least one of them curving over the top of the grapes. I'm filling them in as I go. Kind of shade the grapes. 
Okay, anywhere it feels a little empty, I like to add a little extra one. I'm going to have one curling down too. Between those two little grape areas that come down onto the basket, I want to have a little swirl that kind of comes down. And then I'll have a few little leaves, a few little vines coming off. Not as many as the top one. It's a little bit shorter, less going on at the bottom. Okay, but some leaves and some little swirls, some little vines. Then I want to add a little extra here and there. Little ones, some medium ones. I want to get the dark color first. I'm going to go ahead and start rubbing this color. I just like to put a little bit on, you know, one side or the other side. It's kind of up to you if you want it to be a strong directional light or just kind of they're curling a little bit on the ends. I like to rub it with my fingers so the color blends slightly. It's still wet, but it doesn't always blend. It just kind of sits on top, especially dark colors. So sometimes I rub with my finger. These leaves at the bottom are very dark, so I'm going to add quite a bit of this color. Not exactly outlining, kind of filling them in just a little bit. And that's because they're on the grapes that are towards the back of the bowl. Okay, a little bit up here. Just kind of some lines. I can also get a little bit on the vine. I'm kind of tinting the leaves slightly. Okay, I still want to keep those in the back, so I'm going to put a little extra dark there. These ones I want to bring forward, so I'm just going to put a little bit along the edges. Okay, maybe I put a little stem on some of them. I can also use the highlight color to put stems, but on some of them I want to do the dark color. A few stems, the lines in the middle. I want to grab the highlight color now. I'm going to add some highlights. I'm going to stick mainly to the top leaves and the ones at the bottom. I want to have less of this highlight color along the leaves that are touching the grapes there. So I just want to stay away from that. I just want to add a little bit, if any, or I kind of rub whatever I add over there. So I'm adding a little bit extra here and there. I like to fill in the ones at the bottom just a little bit. Not completely, but I like to add a little bit more than just a line to those. I can also make the stem the lighter color. So it's just a little line starting on the vine and then just coming into the leaf. I'm adding a tiny bit to those ones just to make them look a little 3D, but I'm going to rub it so it's not as bright. And just a little bit here and there. Now we got to do something about the tablecloth. So we want to get a scoop of bright red. A small scoop of phthalo green, make a dark, dark purple, and then we want to make a lighter purple. So we're going to need a scoop of white, a scoop of bright red, and a small scoop of the phthalo green. Again, a lighter purple. Start with the lighter purple first. We're going to add some lines to our tablecloth. Okay, we're going to have some lines that are coming at an angle, but they need to dip down once they reach the edge of the table. So see that edge right where it curves underneath that tablecloth? Have it start dripping down. Okay, it curves down just a little bit. Two lines really close together. And I'm going to leave a little bit of space to do the same thing. Make sure all the lines connect. It goes all the way to the back of the tablecloth. Leave a little bit of space and do the same thing. If it comes below that little table line, have it curve down slightly. But they all kind of slant. Okay, I'm going to have another one over here, another group of two little lines. Maybe I fit in one more over here. It depends on how close together you're putting them and how spread out. Now we want some crossing over. So these are going to come at a different angle. Okay, I'm going to cross and again have it dip down just a little bit if it goes over the table's edge. See that curves just a little bit. Okay, too close together. And then I'm going to spread them out. I'm going to pick a few other ones to get really close together. Okay, so I'm going to leave a little bit of space. Remember to come on the other side of the basket. Make sure all the lines connect. So i got to come to the other side. See, I'm using my brush to kind of line up where the lines will come out. Okay, and again, I'm trying to follow the same direction. I want them all to be parallel. So they're all going to slant. They can slant a little bit more as they go over the table's edge. But see here, it's not even going all the way across. I want to keep that same sort of slant going on. Then I want to add the shadowy color purple in all the areas that's touching that little bit darker kind of gold color that we put in the napkin earlier. Okay, so just where it kind of touches, I'm using my finger to kind of swipe some of the color so that it fades slightly. Make sure you just use a little bit of paint if you're going to swipe with your finger. If you use a lot, it'll smear it and it'll get very thick line right there. 
You just want it to stay as thin as you made it, have barely any paint, and just swipe it just a little bit. Anywhere I can dip down just a little bit, anywhere that shadow color is. Let's get a little close up of our exquisite painting. Look at all those beautiful vines, those shiny, shiny grapes, that beautiful tablecloth. So thanks again for joining us for Wine Nook. We hope to see you again at Paint Along Studios TV. Bye now.